Hi everyone, welcome to my new video on microservices interview questions and answers. I shared my other video links for references which are quite useful for these questions and they help you crack the interviews. Please go through all of them. First question is define microservices. Microservices are small loosely coupled distributed services which can be independently deployed and you can have separate teams working on them and um, they can be developed in different programming languages and you can have the parallel development for these services right so they are independent small deployable components uh, which have some uh, which can be a domain driven um, apis um, having their own uh, scope or the bounded context areas right and then define between difference between monolith and microservices architecture so monolith architecture is built as a large system it's tightly coupled you have all your presentation business and database here as one application and deployed right and so they, if there is a failure in any one component you need to deploy the entire application right and you have a large team who's working on this but on microservices they can be separate independent services which are loosely coupled and a failure in any one of the component you can simply deploy that particular service and have your functionality up. You need not deploy the entire application. Also, you can have small teams which are working independently and they can be parallel and faster development. Next third question is best Java frameworks to build the microservices. First is Spring Boot, which is the most common open source and it's, it easily deploys on various platforms. It has built-in features like security, auto-config, and starter dependency. Drop Wizard is an open source for rapid development of RESTful web services. Eclipse uh, MicroProfile. It upgrades to Java Enterprise Edition, and it's aimed to optimize Enterprise Java for building microservices and cloud-native apps. Right? And then you have Micronaut which is also an excellent support for cloud deployment you have support for service discovery kubernetes distributed tracing and serverless functions ballerina is uh, mainly for cloud computing difference between soa and microservices so soa is a service oriented architecture with an architecture pattern which provides the services to the other components via the protocols over the network. The services share the data storage and uh, they support the multiple message protocols. But in microservices, it can have a separate data storage or separate database. Right? You have lightweight protocols such as HTTP and REST in case of microservices. So in SOA, the services communicate through, uh, through an enterprise service bus, ESB which can become a single point of failure without impacting the app. Whereas in case of microservices, they communicate through an API layer and there is quick and easy deployment in case of microservices as you have separate deployable components, right? Then what are the different features of the microservices application? Loosely coupled. So you have different loosely coupled components. Um, so your services within your system are can be largely decoupled, right? So your applications can be easily built, altered, and scaled. It's, a, it's component based in nature, right? So and uh, next is your continuous delivery. So continuous delivery allows uh, the frequent releases of your software through the through your automation of your um, software testing or approvals. Uh, high scalability in case of your microservices you can scale the application uh, either through scale up or scale out uh, right so that can be done next question is how the services communicate with each other in case of microservices so you can have synchronous communication so wherein the client actually sends a request and it waits for a response right so your receiver has to be available to send back the response and HTTP and HTTPS are the synchronous protocols and you expose the services as rest endpoints. But in case of asynchronous, your client sends a 
request and it doesn't wait for a response so basically the your request is sent to a message queue and even if your receiver is not available right so your message will remain in the queue and it can be processed at a later time and even if your service fails to respond your original asynchronous call is actually not impacted uh, why since it is not waiting for a particular response right so your messages are there in the queue and am qpn and qtt are the asynchronous protocols so either we can use message brokers like rabbit mq kafka etc or um, instead of message queue uh, we can also use message bus for up updating the data asynchronously and so best practices while designing microservices uh, consider having uh, separate data storage for each of your microservices and deploy them separately containerize your services and have a domain driven apis uh, based upon the functionalities you develop also you have a stateless design uh, make sure you treat the server as stateless then what are the advantages of microservices architecture there is a faster delivery uh, you can have uh, um you can you can have uh, frequent releases of your software through uh, through the automation right uh, the, you can have independent uh, development so all the services can be developed based upon the individual functionality and uh, they can be deployed right and uh, then you have increased scaling uh, scalability so individual components can be scaled as per the need right so you need not scale all the components together also there is a flexibility in terms of uh, the technology stack so different languages uh, can be used uh, to build the different services of your application and there is a failure isolation that even if one of your uh, one service of your application does not work right your system will still continue to work right it will not impact the entire system also um, what are the this drawbacks or the challenges of the microservices architecture so we can say uh, the distributed system is difficult to manage right so the intercommunication since you have different services working together in a distributed environment so the communication between them becomes difficult though you have different uh, design patterns like um uh, saga pattern which um, will help you manage the transactions right and to help in the distributed system but it it is difficult to manage and debugging becomes difficult um, so to debug where exactly you had the error that can be difficult though you have different monitoring tools like uh, um kevan or splunk which can help you um track uh, or debug uh, the issue right then the upfront cost may be higher um, so there can be scenarios where you are developing uh, microservices from the scratch right so the operational cost can be higher in choosing the um, uh, in choosing the right technology stack and getting the infrastructure done then automating uh, uh, test uh, writing the automated test can be uh challenging right so you need to take care of that yes so next question is how do we implement circuit breaker or the fault tolerance mechanism uh, we can use hysterics as an open source library which was created by netflix and it works well with spring boot so basic steps you add a dependency pom and then you add a annotation in the spring main uh, class and in the methods where you need to implement a circuit breaker Uh, be, uh, or the hysterics behavior you add the annotation at the red hysterics command and then you have fallback mechanisms defined which will be executed when your services are down next question how do you monitor the services so you have spring boot controller which uh, is default right uh, so it will monitor the statistics for your individual services but it's hard to track when you have multiple microservices so you can have open source tool like prometheus so uh, which can show and activate uh, notifications at certain intervals then you can have uh, kivana or grafana so these are some dashboard instrument for your data visualization also you can have some uh, dependencies in the services uh, 
when you have some lots of dependencies right so you can have app dynamics diner trays and new relics uh, which will actually pull the dependencies between the services and what is meant by scaling in microservices so i have defined this uh, cube on a, um, but we will cover more in detail in the further videos how uh, the you you have x scaling uh, x axis scaling where in the horizontal uh, scaling of your services can be done and y axis you have the functional decomposition where you can scale by splitting uh, the different things then data partitioning is on the z axis right so where you can split the similar things uh, we will cover this in the further video so you can be asked in the interview like uh, what are the famous companies which are using microservices architecture or they have moved from monolith to the microservices so you can give examples of twitter netflix amazon uber uh, there are lots more uh, which you can explore online the node is into mind testing uh, microservices testing so it will validate the process in the workflow right so that it works properly at each and every level so you make sure that your system as a whole it works together and all your requirements are satisfied next question can be asked like uh, explain the microservices architecture with a specific use case so you can watch my video here for reference where i have given the um architecture uh, the case study of uber as in how they moved from monolith to the microservices so you can refer to this link for more clarity then explain the inter service communication bit for microservices so i have detailed out this in my video which you can refer um, so i have mentioned how the inter service communication can be done please watch at this link next question what are the commonly used design patterns so this is a very important question guys so please don't miss this particular question watch my video here for reference wherein i have detailed out all the microservices design pattern covering the different aspects of security observability and uh, scalability so all the different scenarios have been covered please go through this video for more reference thanks for watching my video don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel for more videos thanks for watching